Okay, hello. Uh, I am Dr. Catherine Namono. I am based at the Rockart Research Institute, School of Geography, Archaeology and Environmental Studies, University of David Potter's Rand in Johannesburg, South Africa. I originally come from Uganda and hence my, uh, my Rockart interest lies both in Uganda and in South Africa. So my main focus today is going to be talking about the pygmy forest hunter-gatherer rock art of Uganda, but it is also linked to that of those in South Central Africa. So this is the landscape where we mainly find the rock art in Uganda. Uh, this is mainly granite, uh, nice rocks. The vegetation is usually low, uh, but in some areas you can find a bit of shrubby landscape. Uganda is based in the tropics and it is very similar to Brazil in the sense that the uh, it is located along the equator. So it is a very small country. Uh, a third of it is land, is, is water and, and rivers. There are two kinds of uh, rock art in Uganda. We have the naturalistic rock art reflected by the green um, area in the map. And this is an ongoing project where we are still trying to do more research in finding more uh, more surveys to find more rock art of the naturalistic type. But the most common one is the one which is in the red area, which is the geometric rock art sites. Uh, and these are the ones that I'm going to be talking about today. This is just to give you an example of the big rock art, what it looks like. It is not like you would find in Southern Africa, but it is very similar to the kind of depictions that you find in uh, Northeastern uh, and North Africa. Uh, this is the, one of the, the rock art sites. Um, and this is the rock art geometric. Uh, this is a detail of that rock art. You can see that there are barriers overlays that the site was uh, used quite frequently from the um, number of superimpositioning. This is another rock art site. Uh, in the colonial times, um, access to the sites was protected and you can see from here there is a stone wall that was built around. In the past, it was believed that the best way to protect the rock art was to build a fence around it. So the this wall had a fence going all around and this was a, a gate uh, access. However, Uganda has gone through a series of civil wars and during the civil war, uh, the fence and the door were taken down. Today, however, we do not believe that uh, fencing off is the right way to conserve the rock art. And the community who are around the area are, are the ones who are now managing the sites. This is an example of the, the, the rock art. It is on the roof of the shelter. Um, here we have some oil. Uh, some of the current communities who are, are Christian, they come to these sites to uh, offer some sacrifices. And one of the things they use is oil. And so they attach this oil to the rock. So this is a result of that uh, activity. This is a close up of the, of the site. Uh, this one is in, in white, but most of the sites that you will see are predominantly in red geometric. This is a redrawing that I did of the site, uh, just to give you a more 
detailed uh, idea of the geometric shapes. This is another site very close to the previous one. Uh, it's quite big and most visited site in the area. In fact, I think in Uganda, it is the most visited site. And this one is red, uh, and you can see the uh, mainly geometric shapes, circular shapes, and some boat-like shapes, which we shall be talking about later on. Here we also have some uh, other boat-like shape, as you can see here, and there are these geometric figures also going around. Most of the rock art is quite faded, and um, it takes a strong eye to look quite keenly. This is the close up and you can see that there was once some white uh, in the middle of these paintings, which has now become uh, a bit mixed up with the red. This is on the island in Lake Victoria. And most of the, 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 the painting is on the top of the ceiling of this uh, shelter. There is some here at the entrance and the community in this area referred to this site as the house of the ancestors. And so they do not, um, they approach this site only when they are going to uh, perform some of their rituals communicating with the ancestors. This is another view of, 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 of that same site. It is quite uh, a challenge getting there. There are many rocks and it is uh, quite isolated. This is the inside of the, of the shelter. And at the base of this shelter over here, you can, this is where they tend to have some rock gongs. This bottom part here is struck and it produces some sound. This is the um, looking outward from inside the shelter, looking out. Uh, and these are some of the paintings on the ceiling and on the wall. These are all on the ceiling of the shelter. The site was, was redrawn by uh, Beric Posnanski, one of the early archaeologists in Uganda in 1961. This is another site. Uh, here we can see the paintings over here. And um, this is just a close up for you to see the paintings more clearly. And as you can see, we have the different kinds of shapes, which I have just put in black for your clarity. Here we have another uh, shelter. Um, the paintings are again in red, very, very fainted, very faint. And uh, this is a redrawing for clarity for you to get a, a better sense of the kind of images that we find at these shelters. Now, uh, as part of my, my research um, and building on previous uh, projects, I refer to this rock art as a uh, pygmy forest hunter-gatherer rock art tradition. I use the term pygmy as an academic term simply to describe the hunter-gatherers who uh, are of Central African rainforest, who um, are the ones who we, who we attribute this rock art to, but also to distinguish them from the hunter-gatherers of Southern Africa who are more known. And I reject all negative connotations that are associated with the word uh, pygmy forest hunter-gatherers. Now, most of the rock art that we, 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 we are going to look at today is um, in a region that Desmond Clark referred to as the Central African Schematic Rock Art Group. It is mainly uh, covering the zones of the north of Zambezi, which is roughly over here, the Great Lakes region in this area, and the Equatorial Forest. Now, um, this rock art is believed to be a homogeneous rock art tradition. And as I, you have seen, most of the 
most of the time it is depicted in red pigment. Um, the area covers Cameroon, Central Africa, Congo, um, the Democratic Republic of, of, of Congo, um, Gabon, Angola, Zambia, Malawi, Northern Mozambique, Western Tanzania, Western Kenya, Eastern Uganda. The iconography of the geometric rock art contains repeated um, intriguing images such as circular uh, grid shapes and those that occur independently at some sites as we have seen uh, in the previous slide. This is to give you a more a, a comparison to show uh, that there, there are very strong similarities with the rock art in South Central Africa. This one is taken from Zambia. And this one's also from Zambia. Yeah, these ones are associated with uh, rain uh, and the weather. This one is also from uh, Zambia, uh, showing the different varieties. Down here, you can see that there's a lot of red pigment, and at the top, it's more or less uh, a pink, a, a, a orangish um, kind of, of pigment. Again, you can see if you look quite closely, you can see there is this uh, outline over here, circle with the uh, red lines uh, similarly here there are some red lines and dots which have been redrawn uh, just to give you a more clear idea of the kind of paintings that are likely to be found in in this area characteristics of this rock art are uh, there are depictions of mostly geometric forms that include circles concentric circles divided circles circles with radiating lines, ladders, lines of parallel lines, and they are usually painted in red and white and used both separately or combined, and they occur occasionally in yellow ochre, as we have just seen in uh, the previous uh, slides. Now, one of the reasons why what, what um, the, 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 the rock art is argued to match the distribution of a distinct late uh, late Stone Age group uh, termed the Nachikufan. And um, this kind of rock art, um, I mean, Stone Age tradition uh, is specific with in, in, in a particular area. However, before, prior to that, there was an assumption that uh, the Stone Age tradition, the late Stone Age tradition, called the Wilton, was, which is found in South Africa, ran all the way to East Africa. And one of the reasons for this is that there are some click-speaking uh, people in Eastern Africa who uh, were thought to be uh, uh, aligned to the Southern African hunter-gatherers. However, uh, we now know that we have a smaller group of 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 um, stone tools, which is indicated by that um, patch which I have put there, which is the Nachikufan, and the more general one, which is called the Chitolian. And these, uh, we also know that uh, current research has shown that there is a discontinuity between the uh, uh, um, Southern African late stone tool tradition called the Wilton, uh, that does not con cross the Zambezi, go beyond the Zambezi. We are still waiting for more research to be done to uh, uh, confirm whether this ha ha has been, is, is correct. And so um, the, 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 the north of the Zambezi, there is another uh, stone tool tradition, which is the Chitolian and the East African uh, 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 Stone Age. So we see a clear distinction between the makers of different stone tools north and south of the, the Zambezi. 
uh, and um, <clears throat> this group is there is a mixture of these three in this Great Lakes region area, uh, where we also have this intermingling of the rock art. And the stone tool distribution matches the distribution of rock art. So the Southern African uh, 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 rock art um, made by the Southern African hunter gatherers is found south of the Zambezi, as is illustrated in the black dots. And then that which is made by the uh, forest hunter gatherers is found north of the Zambezi, indicated by the darker shade of colors. Um, and likewise, we do see that there is a consistency between the kind of images that are depicted. Uh, we have ge geometric rock art in Tanzania, in Kenya, in Tanzania, uh, in Malawi, in Mozambique, in Gabon, in uh, the DRC, uh, in Angola, and in Gabon. And we can see that these are all geometric and quite consistent with the, 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 the distribution of the different kind of, 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 of stone tools. And they are also having a consistent geographic depiction that is different from the naturalistic uh, rock art of the sun hunter-gatherers. Um, ge the linguistic data and 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 uh, genetic genetic data has shown that uh, there are a, a, some the, the the there was a genetic divergence between the pygmy ancestral groups, and um, these are consistently distributed in the areas where we can see. Uh, the rock art uh, distrib distributed. This is a more clearer map of that distribution. And um, we can see the current known groups of the uh, forest hunter gatherers in, uh, and they are also intermixed with other ethnic groups. Uh, the Central Sudanic and the Bantu language speaking groups who are also in, in the same area. And all of these have influenced the kind of language and traditions of the forest hunter-gatherers. The area that I'm going to be looking at mostly is this one where the Mbuti and the Sua and the Twa over here. Uh, and I'm going to be looking at their ethnography and their belief systems to help understand the symbolism of the rock art of Uganda. <clears throat> One of the people who did a lot of uh, ethnographic recording was uh, Colin Turnbull. And um, he initially went to uh, the Democratic, the, 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 the Democratic Republic of Congo uh, in the 1960s, he initially went there to record their music, uh, but uh, he his research was despised because it was argued that he idolized the the pygmies in his book, the people or the the forest people. However, he lived uh, with the with these communities for quite a while in 1951, 1954, and 1957. And so this interaction is, I, I believe, uh, was enough to, to have had a more deeper understanding of the spirituality uh, that he writes about in his book. So here he is recording the Mbuti language and music in 1953. And these are some of the images that he took of the community. We can see that uh, over time, they acquired other items of material culture from those who they interacted with. 
Now, one of the things we learned from Colin Turnbull is that the Mbuti, uh, the Pygmies, had uh, a particular, a very interesting cosmos in which they believe in the benevolence of the forest, which they call Indura. And this, it's, this, their cosmos stresses uh, the constant equilibrium. There must be a state of constant equilibrium, of balance. And um, our behavior uh, must be pleasing to the forest. The, po the forest is personified as um, mother, father, brother, sister, uh, partner. And um, this forest um, must be appeased uh, whenever there is uh, tension or if there is anger, if we are um, not happy, then we cause this forest which has got, uh, gives us life uh, to become angry. So the forest, uh, the, the breath of the forest, the wind is called pepo, that is the life force of the breath of the forest. And um, it normally when we are happy when everything is good, the forest is happy. And um, that is when uh, we, we are in a state of balance. However, when we are in a state of a calming, which is called noise, this noise is um, a state where we are fighting, we are quarreling, we have had a bad hand, uh, or things are not going well, or there is sickness, then that is, there is noise. And when we are uh, in quiet or silent, when we are in a state of a kimi, then we, that is when we are happy, when we are, when things are going well, uh, then that is the ideal. And it's important that in whatever you do, you establish a state of balance between a kami and a kimi. And once we do that, there will be joy. And so to create these, when there is noise, then Bluti sing, the pygmies sing to call on the forest to come and cause and create balance. And when they are, there is a kimi, when there is, there is quiet and silence and peace, then they again sing and call on the forest to rejoice in, in them. And as I, I said, the, the whole centrality of the world revolves around creating a state of balance. One of the things that they use to create this state of balance, or which they call upon, is the molimo. Now, molimo is um, a spirit in the forest, but it is also, uh, it also manifests as a trumpet. Uh, and there are two kinds of molimo. There is there an elephant, one which, which is, um, comes out and it tramples the ground. This one comes when there is a state of akami when there is too much noise, then the elephant uh, molimo comes out to stamp out uh, and cause uh, uh, to to remove the 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 the, the, the noise. And in, then we have the one which is the leopard, which comes quietly, stealthily, and it is silent, like the like the akimi. And you can see in the in the in the slide here that this young man is his body is painted in the with with spots to mimic the the the, the leopard. But this trumpet molimo is the one that centralizes the 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 mbuti uh, or the pygmies, and it 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 is a transformative um, trumpet that. Uh, has characteristics of a womb. Um, it is like a fireplace, a hearth that transforms the fire that is made for it. They make a special fire uh, and they, as they are singing and they use this, this fire to bring about uh, peace or calm or restore balance. And this trumpet comes out 
and is blown around the fire. They put it in and out of the fire. And it is during this morning or ceremony that peace is established or that balance is restored either through the individuals in the camp or generally in the camp. This ceremony is performed at night. Here I have included a, a, a picture of a, a person called Otabenga, who was one of the pygmies who was taken uh, during the colonial times for display in, in Europe. Uh, and one of the things that they, when he was asked, what can you, do you want to go with? He said, I need to go with my trumpet. Molimo trumpet. And he used to blow it uh, every time to try to recall and reconnect himself with where he came from in uh, the, the, the forest. Uh, unfortunately, he was displayed in, in, in the museum, uh, in the monkey house. And, and after that experience, he was relocated to Virginia where he hanged himself out of um, sheer frustration. So this is uh, the monimo, which is usually kept um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the forest. Uh, it is taken out secretly at night. It is fed with the leaves of the of the of the forest as it passes through the water. The hunters lead the molimo out of the forest and into the 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 camp in a state of ritual coitus, where the trumpet the trumpet is uh, uh, a metaphor for the male, and the fire is a metaphor for the female. And so there is this primordial uh, uh, ritual uh, coitus that occurs within this uh, blowing of the trumpet, which is said to be uh, regenerative and also restorative in terms of creating balance among the, the pygmies. And the trumpet is also blown during a lima, which is the uh, first uh, ceremony of the girl's first first menstrual cycle, and again, th this is a time when we rejoice the forest, as they say, uh, to celebrate the the maturity of uh, the young girls. And um, Colin Turnbull, when he was writing about the the, the pygmies, he said that. Uh, one of the most perfect forms of communication with the spirit world is the, is when they are playing, blowing this molimo uh, a trumpet, and the songs that they sing. Uh, this is because that they not they are not only performing a set of rituals, but they are also connecting uh, themselves with the forest, which they believe is the giver of all things. It is bountiful, and um, it comes to their to their uh, aid in times of crisis or in times of good fortune. So during the girl's first menstrual cycle, this is a time of of um, rejoicing. So they are being blessed by the moon, and therefore they are. Um, the moon is part of the cosmos within which the forest is a part of. I have tried to show the relationship between um, the molimo, the, 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 the spirituality, uh, and the fire, the molimo. They make a special fire for this molimo during the molimo ceremony, during the elima. Uh, when and they they they, they also uh, uh, believe that uh, the forest is part of their their fortune when they go to hunt or during coitus. So this they sing and dance and the food is part of the whole process of this uh, uh, relationship. And I have tried to think that rock art must have been one of those things that features within this. Cosmos, cosmological um, cycle for it to have been made 
within the context of Molimo and Lima. And so the images that we depict are depicted in the rock art, I would argue, are reflecting this uh, Molimo fire, the primordial or metaphorical womb, uh, and the Molimo, the trumpet, the metaphorical uh, uh, reproductive organs of the male and the female. So this is what I've argued are uh, depicted in the in the rock art, and we find that they have a lot of these dumbbells and circles connecting to each other. In some cases, we have very clear graphic imagery um, that depicts um, male or um, genitalia, and um, here we have one that is very clear. At what this is the entrance to that site which I've just shown you where we have uh, these paintings on the ceiling. And um, you can see the detail uh, in this relationship. And so my conclusion is that uh, these images, whilst they may be connected to other things, but one of the core things that for me speaks looking at the ethnography is it is related to uh, the, the reproduction and and um, and from and continuity or regeneration, uh, and so we find that we there are these phallic symbols which are depicted in the rock art, and this one is found in Zambia. Again, is compare comparatively with that which you have. We can there are very strong similarities between this image over here. And this one, which is from Uganda, we can see that they are uh, the one which I showed you earlier on, which I said was linked to the weather, is also argued to be could be linked to similar things. Where this one is uh, a palace where we are having the Molimo fire represented by these concentric circles and circles with red shapes. And um, again, we are seeing male and female uh, reproduction coming together in the rock art. Some of them are quite explicit. This one is in Malawi, it's still in South Central Africa, where we find uh, the opening of the shelter, which looks like is female. And then we find a male uh, imagery that is painted over here uh, at the entrance. So again, we are seeing male female reproduction symbolism depicted in in uh, from uganda zambia and malawi and we have seen that within this cycle there is a consistency of reproduction being depicted spirituality associated with it being depicted in the paintings uh, also in the paintings there are these grids uh, uh, that uh, and these uh, spread eagled shapes that um, we also know that in the equatorial forest, uh, many of the of the uh, pygmies use the bark cloth to make their clothing, and this is one of the trees that you know when you when a child is born among the Mbuti, they take the child and use the water of the forest to bathe the forest and for the to give the for the child to the forest uh, for blessing. As I've said, the forest is mother, father, parent, it's everything. And so when a new when a child is born, it is taken to the forest and bathed in the forest, and it is wrapped in um then a, a young tender back cloth. And here we are seeing that as early as 1956, um, there was evidence that they, they are making the back cloth from the back and they are using it, they are decorating it still with the same way uh, that the other gentleman was painted his body. And here we see that they are still wearing their uh, uh, back cloth. You can see between 1996, 1965, and 1995, they are still wearing uh, 
uh, back cloth uh, decorated. These are men who are wearing these uh, back cloth um, shorts while the girls are wearing back cloth aprons. So it is highly likely that um, this is the child who is, you know, wrapped in a new uh, back cloth. We also see similar geometric patterns transferred onto these back cloth, uh, uh, back cloth that is used. And some of these back cloth, was, which I have put here, are now in the Smithsonian Institute, but they were taken from the, the um, Ituri Forest. Uh, and you can see that there is a close resemblance to the paintings. I cannot say that the symbolism that you find in the paintings is the same as that which you find in the rock art. However, what it does show us is that there is a painting tradition, there is a, a, a use of back cloth, and so it is highly likely that the geometric shapes that we find uh, uh, some of them perhaps are depicting the male uh, cloth that is used, the back cloth that is used, again, uh, in rejoicing the forest. Here we can see that the Pygmies are still painting their faces. There is still a strong painting tradition, and they are still painting with these uh, uh, geometric shapes. So there is perhaps a more deeper symbolism or, or than I have explained uh, that lies behind the geometric paintings. But one thing is very clear is that perhaps these geometric paint, these geometric uh, 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 shapes speak to the relationship between the molimo, the pygmies and the forest. You can read more about these uh, uh, interpretation and understanding in some of my publications which I have listed here and get to know a bit more about the geometric rock art of Uganda. With that, I'd like to thank you and thank the organizers for inviting me to this conference. Thank you.